So if you're anything like me, when it comes to slicing a model, bridges become kind of like an afterthought, as long as it doesn't require support because it's, well, it's supported from one end and the other, all you want is that the filament actually makes it through. This could be just a one centimeter gap, five centimeters, seven, 10. As long as the filament makes it and it creates, well, a bridge, you're fine with that. But it turns out you can actually do quite a lot to improve your bridging game. And today I'm gonna show you how to transform your bridges from this into this. So stick around. So for this example, I'm going to be using Idea Maker because I found that it has quite a lot of flexibility when it comes to bridging settings. Now I designed very small bridging models here in Fusion 360, it's just a matter of, you know, creating like two boxes on the side which are five millimeter high and a 0.2 millimeter bridge on top. And I threw on four on the build plate. Now I'm going to be doing sequential printing. Now I spoke about sequential printing in a previous episode for Idea Maker. If you want to know how to do it, um, uh, make sure you click on the link that's showing on the top right hand corner now. So I've set four models here and I've already set them up for sequential printing. Um, and now I, what I want to do is create different settings per model. Now in order for me to keep track of exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to be playing around with certain settings at a time, then find the optimal settings for all of the settings that I used and combine them all together to create what I believe is the best bridge I can do. So first I'm just going to separate these models into individual groups. And then I'm gonna go into each one and import the settings. Now if I add settings here and type bridge, there's bridging speed, bridging shell speed, bridging extrusion width percentage, bridging fan speed. I'm also going to enable bridging fan speed. I'm gonna choose bridging flow rate, bridging shells flow rate, and most importantly, I'm gonna apply bridging settings to shell as well. I'm gonna click okay. And as you can see, we have all these settings here. What I'm gonna do is just replicate those settings onto the other models as well. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a standard for all of these. So as you can see, everything here is 100%. I'm going to enable bridging settings to shell and I'm also going to enable bridging fan speed. The first thing I'm going to do is set a speed of 25 for both bridge and shell. I'm going to go on the second one, enable the bridging fan speed and the bridging settings to shell. And I'm going to do this at 50 millimeters a second. Going to go to the third one, do 75 millimeters a second. And the fourth one will have 100 millimeters a second. So as you can see, the first thing I'm going to do is actually sort of gauge the speed, whichever prints the best, um, that would be sort of my, my go-to next essential for the next variable in the setting. So um, if I figure out that the 50 millimeters a second is the best speed, then I can go and start playing around with fan and extrusion width and so on and so forth. So once you slice this and you go on preview, you can actually see that if you go to speed, the four of them have different speeds. And the reason why we set um, the bridging shells to apply the same settings, as you can see, the bridge starts from there and it applies completely the same settings to everything. So we're gonna throw those to print and see how it goes. From those settings, we saw that 25 millimeters a second, for me, it worked best with this printer. Um, so this is the Ender 3 with the Hamera. So these settings might not apply to any uh, or all the printers all the same. I'll explain that later on. But 25 millimeters a second seems to produce the best bridge. So I'm gonna change all of these to 25 because now we know that that is the set speed, at least for a bridge which is about 50 millimeters long in PLA. 
So next what we're going to try is play with extrusion width. Now we know that 100% and 25 produces certain results, so we're going to start upping the ante by the first one we'll do 110. We'll do the second one at 120, then we'll put 130, and the last one we'll do at 140. We'll slice those and we'll send them off to print. Now the extrusion width unfortunately did not really make any difference and that's probably because it is a bridge, at least in my case it didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reset those back to 100% because I didn't see any major difference. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the flow rate. Uh, same settings as the width percentage, but flow rate instead. So I'm gonna do 110, 110. And I'm also going to adjust the bridging shell flow rate to match the inside of the bridge. The next one will be 120. Then it's 130. And then it's 140. Now I'm taking increments of 10. Um, you could obviously go much more deeper into this and change increments by two, by five, whichever you prefer. But for me, tens is going to do it for this episode. As for bridging flow rate, we can actually see a huge difference. So at 130%, the bridge is almost already perfect as is. So we've established that 25 millimeters a second at 130% uh, flow rate is actually right on. So the last thing we can actually play with to see if we can make it better or worse is with fan speed. So I'm going to adjust the flow rate of all of them to 130% because we now know that that is the ideal flow rate for all of them to produce the best result for the bridge in PLA on this printer. And next, we're gonna adjust fan speed. Now we know that 100% fan speed, 25 millimeters a second at 130% uh, flow rate produces that particular result. So we can start the bridging fan speed at 0%. Second one will be 25. Third one will be 50 and fourth one will be 75, doing increments of 25. Obviously you can fit more bridges, you can do more tests once again, and you set it off the slice. And that is the whole process to fine tuning or dialing in your filament. These, these are the, the, the kind of processes that you need to take uh, whenever you're starting to use a new filament on a new printer. It's not just a matter of uh, throwing in, slicing it. You know, If you're happy with, that, with the print that comes out with a stock um, uh, slicing profile, then it's all good. There's no rule book to tell you that you have to do it otherwise. But for those of you who wonder how come certain prints look better than others, is because people take time to dial in their filament profiles. Now this, all this work, took almost maybe a day and a half or two to produce because I've tried it with the 50 millimeter bridges, then I went on to try the 100 millimeter bridges to see what the settings will look like if I change the same variables um, on 100 millimeter uh, bridges. I also went on to try some PEG as well uh, because obviously fine tuning any filament that you use on any printer. So this will take time. And it's not just bridges, then you have to do the retractions, the seam. So these are episodes which I will be producing at a later stage, all on Idea Maker because now I'm fairly used to Idea Maker. So if you wanna see more of these episodes, make sure you click on that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications so you are aware whenever new videos come up. And that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is just one part of many things you can do in order to fine tune or dial in your filament profile. It takes a lot of work. Um, a lot of people spend hundreds and hundreds of hours to dial in their filament profile for slicing in order to produce the best prints they possibly can. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be this way. You, you just could be happy with what you're printing because it looks good to you. At the end of the day, perfection is in the eye of the beholder. If you feel that your print is perfect as it is, then all well and good, no one's gonna tell you otherwise. And if they do, uh, just ignore them. Now, as I mentioned before, that this, the, this settings or the settings I used might not apply to you or your printer. In fact, the settings I used for the Ender 3 with the Hemera with Idea Maker did not apply when I tried to print the same exact bridge with the same settings on the Zaribo 420 using Prusa Slicer. In fact, it looks completely different. But then again, I did use a different filament. So once again, things have to change. So it's, it's very important that you dial in each filament 
on each printer profile um, in order to get the best results possible. That is it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode because this was a lot of work. And if you like what you see, make sure you like this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank my absolutely awesome patrons for the support they have given me. And also to you guys for sticking around and watching this bald headed guy talk about 3D printing. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, happy making guys.